there, it's Amanda and welcome. Okay, so first things first, at the time of filming this, I have officially hit 100 subscribers, so I just wanted to address that really quick and say thank you so much. I am so unbelievably grateful. I, usually I'm okay with words, but I'm having a really hard time articulating the way that I feel and how grateful I am to every single one of you, to everyone who has subscribed, everybody who watches, everybody who comments and likes and engages with me in any way. I. I'm so grateful. I really, when you join the internet, most of the time you join kind of under the assumption that it's really just gonna be you talking to maybe a few people or you interacting with limited numbers of people. To get 100 subscribers, I know that's not a lot in the grand scheme of YouTube, but it's a big deal. And it's a big deal because the people in this particular section of YouTube are so phenomenal and so supportive. And I just, I feel so lucky to have been able to do this and so lucky that there are a hundred of you at least that have subscribed and maybe enjoy watching my face talk about books and weird things. I decided that when I hit milestones I want to do some really fun stuff so we will see for sure. I'm excited but thank you. <sighs> Okay, so let's get into the video. So, so this is a video that I've wanted to film for a while now, like since the beginning of my channel, but I was so uncomfortable and weird in front of the camera. Not that I'm that much less weird now. No, you get it. <laughs> but I do feel like I can articulate a little bit better now and I feel definitely more comfortable than in the beginning. So I feel like maybe this is a good time to film it. I also think it is kind of great that it coincides with like my 100 subscriber mark because that made me very happy. <laughs> so as you can tell from the title, this video we're going to be talking about how to be happy. So in this video we're going to talk a little bit about happiness and about steps that you can take or things that you can do that may help you in your life. I am also, with every little bit of advice or every little discussion that I have, I'm going to be recommending a book, either a book that made me very happy or a book that taught me something about happiness and has helped me in some way. Okay, does that make sense? Recently a lot of people have been talking about how they've been feeling pretty down or haven't really been in the mood to do the things that they love to do. This does happen often and I'm always trying to send good vibes, but I'm hoping that this could in any way be helpful to them. It might not be. It might just be me blubbering on and on for however long this ends up being, hopefully not too long. But if it can help in some way, that's that's what I want. Now you might be thinking, Amanda, what do you know about happiness and about sadness and about feeling like that? Not that I think that somebody should have to experience something explicitly to empathize with somebody else and to take another person's perspective and learn about somebody else's experiences in life and try to understand. But I have experienced that and I have been there and I'm still there quite frequently. You know, I, I, I've felt what you may be feeling. Of course, everybody's experience is different with depression and anxiety and just maybe not even depression and anxiety just a fluctuation of emotions like everyone experiences those things differently as with everything else but I, I have been there and I have felt it I've been so low that I didn't want to get out of bed I didn't want to do anything that I had to do I didn't want to go to work I didn't want to talk to anybody or be around anybody I cried for hours as loudly as possible to get all of my emotions out or also cried forever with not a single sound because it just took too much energy to make the noise. I've hurt so deeply that I still, I'm still finding ways to work through those feelings, right? I've been in a position where I, I felt numb. I've been there for a long time. That was my baseline <laughs> was, was numb. It was dulled feelings. It was as little as possible because it just, the way that it felt was too much. My entire life is one giant stressful <laughs> event, it feels like. See this pimple? Yeah. I'm not an expert and again I don't think that you have to experience these things to to get it and to empathize with people who have but I just want you to know that, that where I'm coming from is a, a place of experience. Why I'm here right now is to hopefully help you and show you things that I've used and ways that I have learned how to balance my emotions and learn how to get through very tough situations and stressful life events and kind of how to exist with seeing who I am and feeling the way that I feel. Every single thing that I talk about in here has really helped me. If this is something that you're going through right now, I, I just want to say that I'm so sorry that you're going through it, but please, it, it will be okay. You, whatever you're questioning, whatever is going on, whatever is happening, please don't question your value. Please don't question how much you mean to the people in your life in the world because you, uh, you've got this. You can do it. I get that it is so hard. I really do, but I hope, I hope this is helpful in some way. The rest of the video, I promise, will be very positive as much as I can. You also might be wondering, Amanda, are you an expert on happiness? <laughs> No. 
But I did take these companion classes in college. One was called The Psychology of Cruelty and Kindness, which was fascinating. I loved it so much. I learned all about the different kind of edges of existence and human behavior, and I learned so much. It was fascinating. I loved it. And then there was a class that you were able to take after a senior seminar called The Science of Happiness. So another question you might have is, Amanda, did you learn so much in The Science of Happiness class? Yeah! It was great. I loved it. I loved it so much. Also, did it make you happier? No. It did not. Well, I guess that's not entirely true. And that is what we're gonna kind of talk about at this moment. Let me share with you first the secret to happiness. Are you ready? The secret to happiness is sadness. Sorry, it kind of is. The secret to being happy is understanding that happiness isn't the only emotion and that your emotions, whatever you're feeling right now, is totally normal and natural and just as important as happiness. All of your emotions are completely valid and they're useful and it's okay to feel like you're feeling. It is okay to feel down. It is okay to be sad. It is okay to be frustrated. It is okay to be so confused and angry. It's okay. You can feel that. Do Feel it. Feel what you're feeling. It is so normal to feel those negative feelings. But also know that it is so normal to feel the happy feelings. It's so normal to be proud of yourself when you do something good. To feel good about yourself. To look in the mirror and go, yeah, I'm awesome. It is okay to be happy. It is okay to be excited and joyful. Oh, that's that's great. All of these emotions are just as normal as the next. There is nothing wrong with having a bad day and you're allowed to have those bad days. You are allowed to feel those feelings. Do it. Feel them. Because part of being happy and understanding happiness is realizing that you're not always going to be happy. That's just a fact. Whether it is because stressful events, maybe it's school, maybe it's work, maybe a loved one passes away or something very frustrating happens. Or maybe it's a fluctuation of chemicals in your brain, whatever it is. It is okay to be angry. It is okay to be sad. Just know that that's not the end. That's not the last emotion that you're going to feel. With that being said, in my secret of happiness being unhappiness, spilled. Uh, the first book that I'm going to recommend to you is a school book that I read in the Science of Happiness. Now, the rest of them won't be school books. Please don't just flutter away, I promise. But this is something, if you're into self-help books, and if you're just interested in learning more about happiness, I highly recommend this book. So this book is called The Happiness Trap by Russ Harris. So this book, its focus is that emotions are normal, that you're going to feel them. And what it does is teaches you how to manage those emotions, how to live in a way that both embraces all of these emotions and uses them. It gives you tips and little tricks and, and ways to kind of find a meaningful life, even within all of that. The reason that I love this book so much is because it is embraces the nature of human beings. Being that, we fluctuate every day in our mood, in our in our weight, in our interest, in our motivation. It it happens and that it's totally fine and this will help you. It did help me and it was very fascinating. I'm so glad that I got to read this. Again, you know, Part of it is embracing the fact that you're gonna feel negative emotions sometimes and that's fine. Another thing that we really talked about while we were talking about this book in that class was that being happy all the time isn't really the goal, right? The goal is more being content and not in a bad way, like not like, oh, this person's content and blah, blah, blah. Being content is good. It's finding a sort of equilibrium, a balance in your life. That's what you want. Being happy all the time, it's exhausting, let me tell you. It's hard and it's exhausting and nobody wants to do it. It's okay to just sometimes just be there, you know, just be existing and being balanced and being satisfied almost, you know, content, little bit of satisfaction. It's okay. You don't have to be smiling and cheerful all the time. Feel how you're feeling and, and analyze how you're feeling and, and why you're feeling that way and you'll be able to adjust your life and you'll be able to find things that make you happy and help keep you satisfied. Because the thing is, that's more normal than being happy all the time and more realistic too. Okay, with that being said, the next thing that we're gonna talk about are some things that hopefully will help you be more happy or find more balance in your life which is what I prefer for sure. So I'm gonna talk about something that has helped me or something that I know is very helpful to people and then I'm gonna recommend a book. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna talk about real quick is hobbies. I'm sure you've heard this before. Find a hobby, find something that piques your interest. If there's something that piques your interest that you've never tried before, give it a shot. Like if you don't have a concrete hobby, find one. If it's that you've always wanted to write but you never did it, write. Write about your emotions. Write about an emotion you want to feel. Write about something that you want to do. Whatever it is, write. 
if that's a hobby that you want to get into or are into. Some people read when they're feeling down. That is a hobby that gets them through. When I'm feeling particularly down, I, I can't read that much. It's really hard for me to focus on anything, let alone reading a book, especially because I want to soak it all in and take it all in. So like I might watch a TV show, like maybe Parks and Rec or The Great British Baking, The Great British Bake Off, I think is what it's actually called. So I'll do something like that or watch, I don't know, Charmed or Supernatural or a Marvel movie. Oh my gosh, I'll watch like The Avengers and that's something that helps me. Also exercising. I know you're probably sick of hearing like, oh, if you're feeling down, exercise. Like, and that's hard because if you have no energy, you're not going to want to go exercise. I get that, trust me. But you guys, it turns out science is real and it does release endorphins. Even if it's something like stretching or going for a walk or doing some light yoga, go for a swim if it's available to you. I recognize this is impossible for everybody if there's something that you can do. Exercising, moving your body, getting your heart rate up, even just a little, it really does improve not just your mood but your general balance in your body. The general balance of chemicals and the working of your body bodily functions, it really does help. Also, some people meditate. I know a lot of people that really utilize meditating. It is something that that helps him so much. So I know it's very beneficial. And again, finding yourself connecting with your mind and your body. Color, draw, make jewelry, uh, play a sport, do kickboxing, hook. Find something that piques your interest. Hold on to it and work at it. Not even just to be amazing at it, but just because it's something that helps you. Hobbies are so important. They're so unbelievably helpful if you're feeling down. You might have to force yourself to do it, but it will help you feel better. Okay, so a book that made me happy while I was reading it that I'm going to recommend. It's actually a series and that is The Lunar Chronicles by Marissa Meyer. This is the last book in the series. The first book is called Cinder. This series is a whole bunch of fairy tale retellings kind of interconnected in this like fantasy sci-fi world. It is phenomenal. I loved it so much. It's one of the best series I think that I've read. This series really made me happy even when it was like stressful like I just wanted to read it and I was happy reading it and that the way it wraps up I was I'm telling you this series if you're looking for something that's not necessarily very light, uh, but is really easy to get through and, and will leave you feeling glad that you read it, I suggest this. The next thing that I'm gonna recommend you do when you're feeling this way is to take some perspective. Now, I don't mean that in the sense that you should be like, oh, well, other people have it worse. Well, I think you should always recognize that everybody's experience is different and there are people suffering from many different things in the world. Yes, you definitely, of course, but that's not what I'm saying. Because because your, your problems are still valid and your feelings are still valid. What I mean is taking perspective on your emotion in yourself. This is hard, you guys, but when you're feeling really down, when you're feeling particularly helpless and feel like you're never gonna stop feeling like that, that is when you need to try the hardest to remember a time when you didn't. You need to look back or look forward, look at a goal, look at a time where you're gonna get there and you're gonna know, if I reach this, it means something about my life. It means something about something that I love. It means something about how hard I've worked. It means something about what I've been able to achieve. It is so hard to get yourself out of the mindset, but you need to remember that it's not the last emotion you're going to feel. It does not have to be that. You have to remember that that will be over. That is the hardest part. There will be another time where you don't feel like that. And it may be right away. It may be sometime soon. It may be after you go to bed and wake up. It may be when you're eating breakfast because you love it. Maybe when you pick up a book. It might be when you go for a walk. It might be when you see your friend. It might be when you finally finish school. It might be when you start school. It might be when you watch Parks and Rec or reread Harry Potter for the gazillionth time. Whatever it is, remember that you're not always gonna feel like that. Taking your own perspective in a different setting is so useful in moments like that. Okay, so the next book I'm gonna recommend actually didn't really make me happy, <laughs> I'm sorry, but it did teach me a bit about happiness and I thought that happiness being a theme through this book was really interesting and I feel like you can really see the struggles and you learn a lot, especially by the end, you're like, oh, the perspective of happiness is so different now. Um, and that is More Happy Than Not by Adam Silvera. If you read this, if you read any Adam Silvera, you know this did not make me happy. In fact, it made me cry, which was important in the moment because I was rough. I needed, I needed something to bring out those feelings in me for sure. And this was very helpful. But also the conversation about happiness is very interesting. It's like minor, but it's interesting in this book. I'm, I'm not going to tell you much about this book. I will tell you that it follows this man, Aaron, and it is really about him trying to find happiness and dealing with his family dynamics and things that he feels and who he is and trying to find his way through all of that. There is a little little bit of a sci-fi-ish element in here but it's very very minor and it's something very interesting 
definitely fascinating to me. I highly recommend this book if you're in a place where you feel like you need one to cry but also want to have that little bit of conversation about happiness, pick it up. Okay, so after just talking about perspective, the next thing that I'm gonna talk about is gratitude. This is also something that's really hard. When you're feeling something so strong and so deep and potentially so negative, it's really hard to be like, okay, what is something that makes me happy? What is something I'm grateful for? It's hard, it is, but I promise that is something that will help. For me, when I'm feeling very low, I, I often think about my siblings and how grateful I am for them in my life and for my friends and for any of the support that I have around me. I'm also grateful, you know, that I can do some of the things that I love. I'm grateful that I'm capable of reading and that I can go to school while it is crazy expensive here and that stresses me out often. I, I love to learn. I really love to learn. The fact that, maybe we'll say that, the fact that I'm able to learn is something I'm very grateful for. I'm grateful for my favorite shows and I'm grateful for my favorite movies and there's always something that I'm grateful. I'm grateful that even it, at moments when it was the toughest, I always had a roof over my head, even if it wasn't my own. Now this isn't to belittle the negative things that you're feeling or the negative things in your life at all. It's about searching hard for something specifically positive, something that you can hold on to and something that you can look at in contrast with all of this other negative stuff that you're feeling and experiencing. That is the purpose of that 100% and I really do think it's helpful. It has definitely helped me. So the next book that I'm going to talk about, I'm going to talk about really quickly because Honestly, it wouldn't be one of my videos if this didn't show up, but we're just gonna throw it in there and we're gonna get it out of there, I swear. And that is Harry Potter. So this is Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone or Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, which is what I believe it's actually called and was originally called. This series makes me so happy. Oh, see, I'm so excited. I just finished listening to this on Audible. I'm like doing a re-listen and oh my gosh, I cried at the end, I cried in the middle, I cried in the beginning. I, of happiness, not of sadness. It's okay to cry of happiness too, as well as sadness. But I love it so much, I really do. I mean, come on, this is, this is gold, people. So, I'll put this away now. I'm sorry. Okay, I hope you're still here. I have two things that I want to talk to you about. Literally just two. So the next one is kindness. Okay, and I mean this in a sense of trying to generate some positivity for other people. I know this sounds weird, but I, pr I, I swear this is something that helps me so much. Supporting other people, being excited for other people, even if I am feeling the exact opposite. You know, s helping somebody else in any way, it makes me feel better. Even if it doesn't make me happy, I feel like I've I've done something. This person is genuinely happy and I'm so glad about that. That it really, it, it lifts me up a little bit. You know, and you can argue with that being said that altruism doesn't exist and maybe it doesn't, but there's nothing wrong with benefiting also from helping somebody else. And I don't mean like in a monetary way. I mean, leaving a really supportive comment or positive comment, like no matter what, that is going to be helpful for that person who has that video. And that, come on, that's awesome. Just spreading a little positivity really even if it, it doesn't come back at you, even if people don't say the same things back to you, which they do, and I'm very grateful, but even if they didn't, it's still knowing that there's somebody out there that is feeling very happy, that is feeling very positive, that is feeling better about themselves, and they feel supported and uplifted. Gosh, that's amazing. And that is such a wonderful thing to do. And I, for me, that is something that definitely, that helps me hold on, you know, and keep going. It's I promise. Spread just a little bit of positivity, a little bit of kindness, and, and it, it feels great to be so helpful to somebody else. It does. So the next book that made me really happy that I've been talking about a lot recently was the Martian by Andy Weir. If you don't know, I recently read this for Booktubeathon, um, and I loved it. I loved every second of it. I laughed, I cried, I, uh, again, happiness. Ah, I keep talking about crying. You guys, literally, I cry all the time. So, <laughs> sadness, happiness, excitement, if I'm tired, I don't know, I cry all the time, it's fine. <laughs> so maybe I'm not balancing as well as I thought. Crying is normal. Okay, there's nothing weak about crying. In fact, it takes a particular amount of strength and endurance and resilience to feel these emotions, people. All right, anyway, love the Martian. This is about a man who is stuck on Mars. If you don't know, I'm sure you know. It's sci-fi, it is funny, it is exciting, it is, oh, I definitely recommend it. It just, it made me happy. I was up the entire time. Even when there was something bad happening, I, was, I felt good reading this book. Okay, the last thing that I'm gonna talk about is probably one of the most important, besides understanding that your feelings are totally normal and that they are going to fluctuate in your existence. 
that would be support. There is nothing wrong with getting a little bit of help, a little bit of support. Reach out to a friend, reach out to a loved one, find a therapist. Gosh, everybody should have a therapist. Go to somebody, anybody that you can talk to, just bounce your thoughts and feelings off of. It's totally normal. Nobody's gonna judge you. Nobody's gonna feel annoyed. Find somebody that you trust, whether it's you know a partner or a friend or a parent or you know a, a therapist or or like a sibling even. Go to somebody that you trust that you know cares about you, somebody that loves you. It could be anybody that you trust and just talk to them. Just express how you're feeling. Just tell them what you're thinking and why and they might really be able to help you. Or at the very least, you've been able to discuss and you've been able to breathe out some of the things that you've been holding and you'll feel better and you know that there is someone that you can talk to if you need to. Don't worry about bothering anybody. This is my biggest problem to this day. I never talked about what I was feeling growing up, ever, and I still, sometimes it's a point of contention with my friends, I still struggle to talk about what I'm going through. It's hard, but they're not bothered by you, but you're not bothering them. You're not a burden. You're, gosh, you're amazing, and everything that you're feeling is valid, and it's okay to lean on somebody. Please lean on somebody. You've got this. Even me, if there's something that you're feeling and you don't know who to talk to about it or don't know if you can or don't feel comfortable, please message me. Send me a message. Send me an email. Send me a message on, on Twitter or anywhere. All of my social media and my email is below. If you have something you want to say and you don't know who to say it to, I'm, I will listen, I promise, and I will help you in the best way that I can. I swear, if you need something, please don't hesitate to ask from me or from anybody that you genuinely trust in your life. Okay, so the last book that I'm going to recommend that made me so happy was Simon vs. the Homo Sapiens Agenda. If you haven't watched Love, Simon or read this book, this is about Simon who is a teenager and he goes through this kind of Cinderella story-esque thing with this guy in his high school that is hiding his identity. It is so good. This book had me up till like three in the morning, which is crazy one because it's a contemporary. Two, it's not like it's like this wild insane thing. I just was loving it so much and I couldn't stop reading it. It was so good and it just made me so happy. I felt all of the warm and happy feelings. It was amazing. I highly recommend it. It's it's a quick to get through. I got this really cheap as an ebook um, and I read it on my Kindle and I just, oh, I sped through it and I still recommend it all the time. I do, I did realize that there's one other thing that I wanted to recommend and it's actually a movie and that is Inside Out. This movie is amazing and I feel like in so many ways it really shows you the things that I want to get across about the importance of emotions and about the normalcy of feeling all of the different feelings. I highly recommend this movie even just for a fun watch but if you've already watched it, re-watch it and think about what is the purpose of all of these. Really think about it. It's so good. I, oh, that movie is so good. I laughed, cried, all the things. Yeah, I know Amanda, you cry all the time. Whatever. Okay, so that is that, I guess. I really hope this was in any way helpful. Please let me know down below if any of this is anything that you do already, maybe, and maybe it's not working for you. Let's let's discuss, let's talk about down below or in a message, whatever. But also tell me what does work for you. If there's something else that you notice that helps you, please comment it down below so it can help other people and we can talk about it. I would love to know. Let me know what you thought of each of these points. Let me know your perspective on happiness um, and kind of, again, finding balance. It's really what it's mostly about. I do want to remind you really quickly, your emotions are valid and there's, there is nothing weak or pathetic about being sad or being emotional or about crying or even about positivity. You know, a lot of times people who are trying to be positive often, they get a lot of heat from people going, why are you doing that? You're being unrealistic, but that's not true. That it takes a special amount of strength and resilience to come back, to exist in those feelings and then to come back from them and still be positive. Let's not even say positive, let's say cautiously optimistic. That is my motto, right? To be cautiously optimistic, to be realistic and to know I'm gonna feel like this again, but I also won't as other points or if something's going on to know that this may happen realistically, yes, but also we're gonna keep a positive outlook until we can't anymore. And even then you can always find something. You are amazing and you are strong and you are important and you matter to somebody, if not many people, I promise. You matter to me for sure. If you need something, even if I've never met you, you've never commented on my video, you're brand spanking new, I don't care. Please, you matter. There are billions of human beings and we are one very small planet in a very big Milky Way and a very big everything, whatever the heck is out there. It doesn't mean that you as an individual don't matter because you are the world to 
somebody and somebody is the world to you you mean something you your existence isn't for nothing you've got this please use these tools if you can read up on it a little bit find things that you love find people that you love and engage with them get help if you need it talk to your doctor talk to anybody that you can you are amazing and you are worth it and you can do this you can find that balance you can feel all of those feelings and still come out on the other side just stronger you've got this thank you so much for watching all of like I said my social media stuff is down below I have a Goodreads which I add everybody and a Twitter and an email of course leave all your comments and your thoughts down below every single one of them I want to hear them even if you disagree with me let me know that's totally fine I love it love a conversation like and subscribe if you have not already or would like to whatever thank you so much for watching I genuinely hope that this was helpful in any way shape or form even if it wasn't I'm sorry and I hope that you can find something positive out of it you are all so amazing and I love you and thank you for 100 and I will see you very soon. Bye!